Hello everyone, this is Grade 6, Module 5, Lesson 5, Problem Set. So for number 1, uh, looks like we're going to be doing some dimension labeling. If AB is 20 units, FE is 12 units, AF is 9 units, and DE is 12 units, find the length of the other two sides. Then find the area of the irregular polygon. So I want to label first, and I see AB is 20 units. And I'm going to use U to abbreviate. FE, which is right here to here, is 12. And let's do U. AF is 9. And DE is 12. So now I need DC and BC. So let's kind of take a look at what we have here. Uh, it looks like this FE and DC, if I add 12 to this, I'm going to get 20. So 12 plus what gets me 20? Or we can do 20 minus what? Or 20 minus... 12 will get me DC. And that's going to be 8. So DC is 8 units because 12, this line, plus this, equals this. So 12 plus 8 will get me the 20. And I'm going to erase that so I have more space. Now I need to find out this. And it looks like if I do 9 and 12, it's going to equal BC because I can slide this 12 over here and I can line it up right here to make a full straight line. So 9 and 12 is 21 units. So I see my two measurements. I have 8 and 21. Now, um, what we need to do is find the area of these. Uh, and it's going to be the same formula, length times width. And you can break this up any way you want. Uh, I'm going to break it up like this. So I'm going to find the area of this piece and then the area of this piece. So I know that length times width is 20 units times 9 units. 20 here, 9 here. 2 times 9 is 18, and then I'll put in my uh, 0 here for it, because it wasn't 2, it was 2 tens. So units squared, that's this piece. And then my other piece, I'm looking right here, which is 12, and then my new dimension, which is 8. And I'm going to rewrite my formula. because I want to show which formula I'm using. 12 times 8 is 96 units squared. So that's 96, and then I can just add the 2. It looks like it's 276 units squared. So that's the area of the uh, irregular polygon, because I broke it into two regular polygons, two rectangles, and added the two pieces together. So that's the same thing you'll be doing for two. Let's uh, glance at three, because three looks um, kind of interesting. So we have to determine the area of the trapezoid below, and it's not drawn to scale. So I have 22 for all of this. So that's my base. There's my height, and I see it forms a big triangle. Now, 22 covers this whole thing. If they had broken it into two different measurements, I would have had to add the two together, but they didn't. Uh, all they did was give me 22 as the measurement of the whole piece. So, I'm going to do one half base times height, and I see my base 
is 22 meters. And my height is right here, it's the 18. So I have one half, and I'm going to do my 22 times 18 off to the side. So 176 for my top part, for my first partial product. 220 for my second. And it looks like it's 396. 396 meters squared because I did meters times meters. Now i got to take half of that. So, I know taking half is dividing by 2. And it looks like I get 198 meters squared. So that's my first, the one in purple. Now, I'm left with this. And this is a tough one. I see my base is given to me right there of three, but what's the height? Well, it's the measurement from the base to the top part here, and it goes all the way up to this, so really, here's the height as well. Because if I take that and slide it over, it's going to line up with this, which would be my height. So I have three and 18. So I'm going to do one half base times height again. And I have one half, my base is 3, and my height is 18. So 3 times 18, um, it's going to get me 54 meters squared, because meters times meters, and then half of that. And I know half of 50 is 25, and half of 4 is 2. So 25 and 2 is 27 meters squared. And if that didn't quite make sense to you on how I found half of 54, show it off to the side. You'll never have an issue if you show the work off to the side. So that's where I get my 27 from. So now, uh, I want to find the area of this. I have my two pieces. I can just add those two together. So I have 198, and they're both meters squared. So I know I can combine those. 7 plus 8 is 15. Bring it up. And I get 9 plus 1 plus 2 is 12. So I'll carry another. And I get 225 meters squared. So my area is 225 meters squared. Let's take a quick look at page 2. Now, with this, we have to determine the area of the shaded isosceles trapezoid below. And that's going to be finding a couple different pieces and then subtracting out. So the area we could find first of the rectangle. So we have 12 times 18. And again... I'm not going to go through length and width because of the commutative property. I just know I need to multiply those two. And when I multiply those two, 12 meters and 18 meters, I'll get something meters squared. So once you get that calculation, you can put that in. And then I need to find area of triangles 1 and 2. And I see that they're going to be the same amount or same area. So they're both going to have a height of 12. I'll get you set up for this one. So one half, uh, the height I know is 12. Now, to find the base, we see that this plus this plus 3 will get me 18. So if I take the 3 away from the 18, I'm left with 15. I need to take half of that. So 7.5 or 7.5, depending on if you want to do decimals or fractions. So I can then um, put in my 7.5 that I'm going to multiply by. <clears throat> so this is for one of the triangles. And what you'll have to do is whatever answer you get for this, 
just know that you have two of them. This is only for one, but you need two of them because you have this shape and this shape. So you can subtract off two of these areas from your total area right here. Now, down below, we need to figure out how much... Uh, it says, here's a sketch of a wall that needs to be painted. The windows and the door will not be painted. Calculate the area of the wall that will be painted. Uh, so for part A, the first thing you want to do is find the area of the whole thing. And it looks like it's 12 times 8. So the area of the whole piece is 96 feet squared. That's the whole thing. Now we want to substitute or subtract out the window, this window, this window, and this. So the window, I see that it's 2 times 2, and so that's 4 feet squared. So that's 4. Uh, and that's four. And for this one, I see it's six and three. And again, I'm writing my formula for all of these just to show my work. And I have 18 feet squared. So now I can take my 96 feet squared and I'll subtract off. 4, 4, and 18. And if I add those up, I know 4 and 4 is 8. 18 plus 8 is 26. And I'm subtracting that because I don't want to paint the door and the windows. So I'm left with 70 feet squared. So that's how much area needs to be painted. Part B says, if a quart of extra thick gooey sparkle paint covers 30 feet squared, how many quarts must be purchased for the paint job? So, one quart equals 30 feet squared. I know one quart, if I use one quart on that 70, I'm going to be left with 40. So, two quarts is going to cover 60 because I just doubled it. So if I subtract another 30, I'm left with 10 feet squared left that I still have to cover. I can't purchase uh, pints or cups or ounces of paint. I can only purchase this in quarts, as it says. So if I get three quarts, that'll be 90. Um, and I know that 60 is not going to cover enough of 70, but 90 is going to be too much, I still have to purchase the three quarts because we can't purchase anything less than a quart in terms of this. Um, so just you always want to make sure you have enough to cover the square footage, which in this case is 70 feet squared, and you want to make sure that you have enough to cover it. So 60 wouldn't have be enough. Um, 90 is the next step up, which is a little too much, but it's still enough to cover it. And if this person paints anything like me, they're going to need a little bit left over. So um, I hope this helps. Thanks for watching, and good luck on your problem set.